Good morning. This is Busy again, and today I'd like to show you some of the progress that I've made on my Bendini machine, also known as a Watson machine. And I am pleased to report that I believe that I actually have a working model that I would like to show you all today. Um, just a brief explanation of what's going to be happening. The top part of the machine is the alternator, and that's going to be driven by the motor underneath the table. You can't really see it because of the, the camera angle. Um, the alternator supplies power to these two capacitors here. They are SPL 2 farad 24 volt capacitors. There is a switch underneath the alternator which cycles through twice per revolution. It has three positions. When the switch is in the first position, these two alternator capacitors come in contact with the battery capacitor combination which is at the switch. If you look at my previous videos, the I had capacitors only at the switch. However, thanks to George's encouragement, George is a, a gentleman at the Energetic Forum, I tried using a battery and I liked it a lot. However, it was not quick enough to keep up with my switch. So to solve the, the speed problem, what I did was I put a capacitor in parallel with that battery and it works fantastic and which would help me to, to get this machine working properly. Anyway, as the alternator continues to rotate, the, the switch goes from position one to position two. At position two, the switch is not in contact with any other component in, on the machine. Then the switch comes in contact or comes to position three. And at position three, the battery capacitor combination comes in contact with these two capacitors here. And those capacitors are motor capacitors. And when it, the switch is at position three, the battery capacitor does two things. First, it charges the motor capacitors, and it also sends a strong pulse to the motor and helps to drive it. Then the alternator continues, the switch goes to position two, However, when it's in position two, there's still some power left in that capacitor which helps drive the motor as well. So the motor is actually getting continually powered, but is getting pulsed with strong voltage pulses twice per revolution. And this is what helps me keep up momentum at good speeds and helps me, uh, give, helps me get very good voltage production. Now what I'm going to be doing here shortly is I'm going to be starting the motor up using the start battery on to the left. Once the motor gets up to speed, I will disconnect the start battery and you'll be able to see this in operation. I'll know that the alternator is up to speed when this multimeter here gets up to 26 volts. This is the multimeter measuring the power from the alternator. This is the multimeter measuring the power at the switch with the battery and capacitor. And this is the multimeter measuring the power going into the motor. So what I'm going to do right now is start the motor. Okay, we're at 26 volts out of the alternator, so I'm going to engage the switch right now. Okay, as you can see, when I engage the switch, there the motor began to slow down a little bit, and the voltage coming out of the alternator went down from around 26 down to around uh, 20, 21 volts. The fluctuations in power you see going into the battery are actually back EMF from the flyback dial which is across the motor. Now that the motor is used to the, that speed, I'm going to disconnect the start battery.
right about now is when that'll be the constant speed of the motor right now. The motor is only running by power from the battery at the switch, and that battery is being continually charged by the alternator you see spinning in front of you. As long as that alternator continues to produce power and continue to spin, that battery will continue to power the motor. As you can see, we're putting out anywhere between 13 and 14 volts, but we're only using between 5 and 6 volts at the motor. And again, like I said, you're, we're also getting back EMF off of the flyback dial, which is the reason you see pulses going into the battery in the middle of the multimeter. So far, we've been able to keep this running for 36 hours. Um, we do measure a very slight increase in power, or I'm sorry, in speed of the motor, about every hour, possibly about a one tenth of a revolution increase in power. Um, we actually had to yeah, run it for 36 hours, but had to shut it down for noise, not because something was wrong with the motor, simply because it was simply too loud. Um, but there it is. The motor is only being run by power it's producing it itself. There's no other external power source coming into this system. Uh, I would like to thank everybody at Energetic Forum, uh, especially Aaron for putting that forum together. i also like to thank John Bendini who inspired so many of us amateur inventors. I'd also like to thank my wife, Biffy, who has been an incredible encouragement and the love of my life, and I'd also like to thank God Almighty for all of his help and all of his wisdom he's given me. Thank you, and have a great day.